Hello everyone, I'm Julian Walker. I'm a senior product manager with Life Technologies and welcome to my talk on greater KRAS mutation coverage with simple interpretation. I will introduce two new fragment analysis reagent sets for KRAS and BRAF mutation analysis. These are new approaches from Life Technologies and we'll take you through how we've tested these reagents against 118 paraffin embedded formal and fixed samples and we've demonstrated how these reagent sets are a very sensitive and specific method for doing this type of oncogene detection. We'll take a look, we'll, we'll go into a um, greater detail about the KRAS and BRAF mutation reagents themselves. We will talk about how these integrate into the analysis workflow and then I'll conclude with a discussion of our findings. Okay. So KRAS and BRAF are oncogenes that have been implicated in various types of malignancies, including lung, pancreatic, prostate, skin, and colorectal cancer. It was in 2008 that uh, KRAS and BRAF mutations were associated with the inefficacy of anti-EGFR therapies, specifically for metastatic colorectal cancer. Now, we have not seen the same stepwise advancement in the treatment of cancer that we've seen in other types of major diseases. So the hope is that by studying oncogenes that researchers will gain insight into really the new development for future targeted intercellular therapies and diagnostics. Okay, so let's take a look at how KRAS and BRAF work with the EGFR signaling pathway. So KRAS and BRAF are proteins that are involved in sending signals in cells and in cell growth. The protein products of the KRAS and BRAF genes perform essential functions in normal tissue signaling. So epidermal growth factors bind to receptors, and in normal RAS protein function, this triggers a cascading phosphate conversion that then leads to cell proliferation. So if the prior diagram was a normal cell, let's think of this diagram as a cancer cell. So EGFR inhibitors bind to the receptor and effectively shut off this cascading effect, leading to the retardation of the tumor cells and subsequently freezing the growth of the tumor. Now what happens in KRAS mutations is that despite the introduction of the anti-EGFR therapy, the RAS protein is essentially locked in the on position. So this cascading phosphate conversion will continue and the cancer cells will proliferate. So how is this analysis being used? Well, we know from prior publications that KRAS and BRAF mutations appear mutually exclusive from each other, particularly in metastatic colorectal cancer samples. So this has led to a process in which samples are first analyzed for KRAS mutations. If no mutation is found, then they go on for BRAF analysis. So we've taken a look at the background of KRAS and BRAF as oncogenes. Let's take a closer look at the uh, mutation analysis reagents specifically for the detection of KRAS and BRAF mutations. So the reagent set that's now available from Applied Biosystems contains all of the components that you need to amplify your PCR, clean up that PCR, do your mutation enrichment and primer extension, as well as an unincorporated dye cleanup kit. Now, both of these reagent sets also include all of the positive controls necessary for each of the uh, variants that are interrogated by these reagent sets. So this is possible by the shifted termination method. Now shifted termination recognizes wild type or mutant target sequences and selectively extends the primers from 1 to 20 nucleotides. The extended fragments are then differentiated and separated by capillary electrophoresis. So the wild types themselves are also tailed. So in the data analysis itself what you'll see is that the wild type will always appear to the left of the mutation. Now these are also multiplexed in a way that for all six possible mutations in codon 12, these are interrogated in a single tube. For codon 13, similarly, all, po all six possible mutations are interrogated in a single tube. 
The BRAF reagent sets are also multiplexed, so three of the mutations in codon 600 are also interrogated in just one tube. And this is what the data looks like, where we have a very clear mutation peak in relationship to a wild type peak. We've tested these reagent sets against 118 FFPE colorectal cancer samples, 70 of which were metastatic. We did the DNA extraction using the TrimGen wax-free DNA extraction kit. We then ran this through the KRAS mutation analysis protocol. And we analyzed the results on both the applied biosystems 3130 and 3500 genetic analyzer. And then, of course, all samples were confirmed using standard CE sequencing. So this is just an example of what the data looked like when we got it back. And once again, what we see is a very clear mutation peak in relationship to a very clear wild type peak. Now, in terms of these two instruments, we see that the data is very similar with just a very slight normalization of the background on the 3500. So we tested these 118 samples, 70 of which were metastatic. All of the mutations that were discovered showed up only in those metastatic samples. So most commonly, we saw that the regions that were picked up were in G12C and G12V. Now, of all of the nine variants that we picked up in codons 12 and 13, five of which proved to be very rare variants in the areas of G12, G12A, G12R, G13S, and G13R. So overall, all of the mutations we detected, all 32, they only showed up within the 70 metastatic samples, which equates to about 46%. Now this is consistent with what we're seeing in other journal publications. Okay, so we've taken a look at our new KRAS and BRAF mutation analysis reagents for targeted fragment analysis. We've tested the KRAS mutation analysis reagents against metastatic colorectal cancer samples. We've run them on various capillary electrophoresis platforms. And what we've determined is that this is an accurate and easy to interpret method to identify and differentiate KRAS and BRAF mutations. So for more information, you can visit appliedbiosystems.com slash KRAS or appliedbiosystems.com slash BRAF. Thank you very much.